What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes, with Andre. Hi, Andre. What's going on, guys? You're reading a book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, We've sir. Got Steam Heat by Dan Hollihan. Great book. Great book. Ladies and gentlemen, that book is required reading. Every year, my guys, new guys included, we reread that book. And um, this year, I learned again about the Spanish uh, flu. And that living rooms used to be called parlors. And now funeral parlors are called parlors. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this morning we are heading to uh, Oceanside, which is on the south shore of Nassau County on Long Island in the great state of New York. It is a new client, or should I say new customer, that has a problem with their heating system. It's, it's not heating like it used to be. So we're right around the corner from them. Let's go see what's going on. Hopefully get some video and hopefully we can learn something new today. That is the goal. Learn something new every day. And together we can make the trades great again. All right. Smash that thumbs up button in advance. And let me get your thoughts and feedback. Also criticism down in the comment section down below. All right. Let's go blow through some stop signs and get to the job. I don't know if Dan, you told it this yesterday, but there's a couple rules of running a successful service call and it starts at the beginning. One of the first things we do is, upon our, as soon as we pull up to the house, we're at the front door in less than 60 seconds. A lot of times they're waiting for us and they're by the window because they, they got the message that we're on the way. You know, if we sit in the truck for 10 minutes, yeah. unless we're early, like, it's like service calls at eight o'clock and we're there at, at 7.45, okay, then we're sitting there unless we see them. Like I'll position my truck in a way where we can see the front door. So if they open the front door, we can see them. Uh, also, when you're staying at the front door, try to step one step down, all right? So you're not overpowering them. And also turn your body on a 45 degree angle, perpendicular to the front door. Rules for a successful uh, first impression. Hi, Hi, how are you? Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm Mike, this is Andre. Hi. Nice May we come you. in? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming. Of course, our pleasure. Thank you. I was commenting to Andre, we pulled to the house. Hi, good morning. good morning. You must have the oldest house in the block. Yes, 1930. And I was wondering what kind of heating system they had, because a lot of homes here have either forced air or hot water. But I'm gonna guess maybe steam, but I could be wrong. Not yet. Gas, right? Water. Water? Hot water? Yeah. Uh, okay, I was gonna guess steam. Because yeah. this is like, the, this is like, this house was like, all the farmers around this house yeah. back in the days. Yes, yeah. yes, it's a great house. I think it's the oldest one, right? 1930? The only one that, the only style left. Oh, left. left. Yeah. Oh, they tore them all down? No, I did. <laughs> so this is the only one in it, miles around. We bought the house two years ago. Oh, okay. And, yes, um, yeah. you know, it's definitely, it's been upgraded in, in some... And they got tall ceilings, too. That's beautiful. I mean, yeah, the, wow. the charm has been kept. It's really... Very nice. You know, they did a nice job. But the heating system... Um, I mean, it's, tell it, me. it's not, it's, it's, it's just not that good. You know, okay. I mean, it, it was brutal a couple of days ago, weeks ago. Yep. Like and last weekend when yeah. it was six degrees Saturday morning. Yep. Yes. And how about how, how about the Christmas weekend? It's fifty-eight in here. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, we just replaced our windows. We got all the windows here. Okay. Yeah, I noticed the black mm -hmm. trim is very yeah. nice. Nice touch on the outside. Thank you very much. So we're gonna get all the windows done. Downstairs, when you look at the basement, you'll see this. This is a lot of Swiss cheese. There's a lot, a lot of holes we're patching up. Okay. Insulation in. Just an old, old basement, but. Want to take a look at the uh, sure? Yeah. Uh, how many th uh, before you head downstairs? How many thermostats in the house? There's uh, one, two, three. Three, okay. And I noticed you have base uh, slant fin baseboard. Is that throughout the whole house or some? Uh, yeah, through right. here, not here. This is radiant floor heating. Okay, here. that's a separate zone. Yep. This one. And quick question: So when there was that cold, was this the warmest room in the house? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would say for that. sure. For okay, sure. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that's in floor radiant hot water or electric? I don't know. Okay, we'll find that one to the board. No okay. The bathroom, where you came in, you know? Yeah, I see that. I gotta ask a stupid question. Why do you have an electric water heater? Why do you have an electric water heater? You have solar panels in your room? No. Okay, it came with the house, I take it. Yeah, everything came with the house. Everything what did, what did your electric bill like? 280. You're around? 300. 
Euro. Okay. Euro. Three hundred. Okay. You see how it says five hundred twelve, five hundred fourteen dollars on it? Mm -hmm. That's like a middle America where they pay like very little for electric. It's probably close to like fourteen hundred dollars a year to run this water heater. By the way. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. Yeah. Great. Most listen. If you, I'm surprised since you have a gas water heater here that you have an electric water heater. Most people, it's very rare. Like in some in some cases where you have solar panels or if you live in the village of Freeport where they have their own electric company where they pay nine cents a kilowatt hour instead of 21 cents, mm -hmm. then it makes sense. But yeah, it's just, uh, okay. 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 All right. So Andre, here's your gas-fired boiler. We have three zones. There's a radiant zone off there and two hot water heating zones. We have our. Oh, let's do a par parts identification. He's learning, by the way. So, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm not gonna. You're not gonna pay for a week. Good. So you're not gonna pay more than from what I normally would. You know, how long we normally would be here. Okay. Okay, Andre, right here. And I do what this is called. Damper mode. Oh, very good. Automatic damper. Automatic vent damper. You know its purpose? Yes. What's when, its purpose? As soon as you turn on the thermostat, ready. Uh, turns basically turns. Uh, tells the to, um, tells the damper to open up. Okay. You know what? What? It, why it's there? Um, the size uh, for the thermostat and uh, no. okay, when the boiler is off, yeah, like it's off right now, the damper should be closed. Right. Any heat could be could be that the boiler has will be coming out of the diverter here. It's not on, but there's there's, there's heat radiating from the boiler dumping out here instead of going up the chimney. Okay. So when that's closed, whatever excess heat's there again, the flame is not on, but it's gonna dump it to the, into the house or to the basement. Okay, if it was open or there was no damper, that heat is just going to want to go up okay. and go up. Okay, the red things. Uh, circulate Very good. You know what this is called? Uh, backflow? Thermostatic mixing valve. We have rating and heating. So we have 180 degrees of wait, water. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Thermostatic mixing valve. All right, in the interim, we're going to listen to what, what uh, more information what they have. The entrance, they need a mud hole. It says on the little screen that we have there, 46. Okay. Question. Yeah. You lived here for two years, you said. Mm -hmm. Or well, you bought the house two years ago. Mm -hmm. This is not your first winter or first day at the rodeo. Right. Right? When did this problem start? First first time that Just we, first since we bought the house. Oh, so since you lived here, it's been a problem. Mm -hmm. Because we bought the house in March, so it wasn't that It was that never cold. as cold as it was the last, we talked about the Christmas and a couple of days, it, it never got to below zero, but the house has always been chilly. And you know we that's the windows you know the inside. So here. this is the second winter. The second winter. Second Last winter. winter, and I get. Listen, and winter's normally cold. We don't usually have those six degree days. Right. We don't usually have them, but it, right. it's still winter. Right. What do you like to keep the thermostat set to? I want to keep it seventy-two, seventy-five. Seventy-two, seventy-two. Her, she she likes it a lot warmer. Okay. Uh, you have, and again, don't don't take it the wrong way. You have unrealistic expectations to get to seventy-five degrees. Right. It's not going to happen. Okay. We, as professionals, me being a plumber, right? Mm -hmm. We install these systems with certain design temperatures, okay. and the outdoor design temperature, mm -hmm. and just hear me out for a little while, is around thirty-six degrees for an average winter temperature day. Okay. That's average. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and an average indoor temperature of around seventy-one degrees. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I, I, but I'd be fine. I'm cold. Right, you'd be fine. Okay. Like um, the boiler can only produce or only burn so many so many candles. Mm -hmm. for, for keep it very simple. Right. And the baseboard that you have mm -hmm. can only, you know, uh, handle so many candles. For example, I'm going to give you some worth. You, you both are educated people, right. so maybe this hopefully you'll this, you'll gather some of this. You know that baseboard you have throughout the house. Mm -hmm. Every foot of baseboard, as long as the louvers are open, you know those little things, those little yeah. flaps on top of it. Mm -hmm. As long as they're open, it will deliver 600 BTUs of heat per foot. Okay, I don't even know what size this boiler is, but I'm going to guess it's 105,000 BTUs. Well, I haven't looked at it yet. All right, um, but that's gross. The, what, 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 that's how much it burns. That's not how much it's giving you, because there's a difference, and that's called your chimney, which is usually around twenty percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say your room, and again, I'll, I, I just bear, bear with me for a, a second. Let's say this room requires we do a, a calculation, which is not normally done. Let's say the room requires. 5,000 BTUs to heat that room properly to okay. design specifications. That means you have proper insulation, proper windows. Uh, the direction of north actually plays into factor to all this, right? But the room only has, let's say, 2,000 BTUs of heating output. Okay. You have a loss of 3,000. Mm -hmm. The room will always never be hot enough or warm enough. Okay. okay? Typically, with a home like this, and again, this whole base, uh, base comes with experience. I don't, have to, I don't have to measure every single room here or talk, talk to you about windows and insulation. 
But typically, uh, in, in New York, the Northeast, where we have hot water boilers, is the, the baseboard wraps around outside walls of the home. Okay, and then we take for, we take it for other you know um, not for granted, but we take it into consideration that the walls are you know average insulation, average doors, average windows, all this other stuff. Average, right? You don't live in a shack, you don't live in a bungalow, you live in a in a in a well built home that's almost a hundred years old, and the insulation may not be the greatest, but you have new windows. The door looked kind of okay. You know, it's not like I see gaps everywhere. There is. There is. There is. Which I'm trying to explain to her. That cold air coming in, and what this thing can pump out, it's not going to ever get to it. Understood. So when we, gotta, when we try to get everything insulated, we just want to know if this thing is working. This thing is is, is being 140. Is pushing out as much energy as it possibly can. Ah. And that is set for one, 180. Seems like the second floor, third floor is getting heat, the second, but this one is getting heat. How do we know it's the second floor? No, it's just... Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. This one goes... I don't know. What thermostat is on right now? No, no one is not... Well, one, which one is act actively on? Because right now, this circulator is not on. I like to know where it goes. I have no idea. Let's see. Hold on. No, this pipe... Goes here and it goes across, across here. Yeah, let's go see each thermostat. Okay, so we have zones one, sorry, two and three on. Two and three, this is the second floor, which is hot. This is the radiant, which also connects to the first floor bathroom. Cool bathroom, by the way. Our triticator gauge is showing 120 degrees. But our boiler control is set for 180, and I just touched it, and then it went back up again. We turned back on, and now all the lights are on. We're going to watch this, because when we first got here, I heard the boiler come on and off sh in a short fashion. Yeah. Like it was short cycle. So let's see what that's doing. We came, it was already on, so I don't know how long it's going Yeah, we'll find out shortly. No. Okay. So, if we look right there, if I zoom in, you're going to see that the green power light, which is normally on, is illuminated. The red light, which stands for a thermostat circulator, is powered. But our limit, damper, and flame, and low water cutoff are all off, and the boiler's not running. All right? But our temperature is, now it's 140. All right? This feels, this feels hot. All right, and this is going to feel mixed because that's the purpose of this mixing valve. This feels like 120 degrees. This feels... This one feels looks like it's 120, 130 degrees. This is definitely that. And let's find out exactly what it is by taking out our thermal camera. And we will see what the temperature of the pipe is. Okay, so this pipe right here, oh well, look, I was deceived. It's 129 degrees. And let's go to this pipe right there, also 129 degrees. And this is cooler. Wow, 123-ish. That one. And this one is cold. And our tridicator gauge, which is what that is, is reading 140 now? Right now, yeah. Okay. But like one, yeah, a little less than that. Yep. I would like someone to raise the temperature of the thermostat on the first floor. First floor, which yeah. one? This one, the, the living room? Or living the, room, yes. Living room. Let's just raise it up just a couple degrees. Just like a little, not all the way up. Let's just see what, what it does. Mm -hmm. I want to see if by raising the thermostat up, does it energize zone one? And not, not all the way up, just like two degrees or four degrees. Because you may also have a problem with the thermostat. Right? It would, it, you know, it would be nice if to know if, if zone one, like it is now, is illuminated when you had no heat on the first floor. Um, so what, I, what we verified so far is that the boiler temperature is actually not 
turn, is, is turning off prematurely. The boiler is turning off prematurely. So the boiler is set for 180 degrees, which is what you need. Earlier, we were talking about every linear foot of baseboard that you have, slam for number 30 baseboard, will give you 600 BTUs at, eight, at 180 degrees of water temperature, okay. right? That number will be drastically lower mm -hmm. if I lower that temperature to, say, 130, 140 degrees. Because it's not, it, it needs 180 degrees, that's what it's designed to, to heat at. Right. Mm -hmm. right, now there are, I don't want to confuse you, but there are certain things that we now use in these days called outdoor resets and things like that, which modulate the boiler temperature to maximize efficiency. And, and what that is, is basically it, the outdoor temperature justifies the boiler temperature. So let's say it's 20 degrees out, the boiler's at 190 degrees. Okay. Oh. <laughs> or, or, or lower, right? It's at 100, which is the max, really, that it should be. Because it's not a steam boiler, it's a hot water boiler which is generally 180 degrees. But let's say it's 50 degrees out and the thermostat is on, it doesn't need that 190 degree of water, 180 degrees of water, it needs 145, 150. You also have to, there are limitations how low you can go okay. with this type of boiler. Okay. If you had like a wall hung system, it's, you can go like to 110 with, and it'll thrive. Like it's like it's designed for that. Right. So the problem we have right now, the boiler is turning off way too soon. I had to turn to raise the thermostat up just a little bit to see if the thermostat communicates with the boiler to turn on, and it does. So right now, zones one, which is first floor, zone two, which is the den and first floor bathroom, and zone three is the second floor. They're all on right now, and we're going to watch the boiler temperature and see if it turns off prematurely. And it pro and it's, it's it should because that's what it's been doing. Uh -huh. okay. And the only difference is the only re only time you notice a difference is when it's cold outside. Here's a perfect example. I have one of those crazy boards that hangs on the wall, mm -hmm. and I have a mixture of radiant heat mm -hmm. and like baseboard. But it's not, it's some baseboard, mostly convectors. They're like miniature radiators that get recessed into the wall a little bit, right? But I'm also a plumber. I could figure out when it gets cold that I could change things around, like turning a, turning a temperature, like a thermostat up a little bit. My boiler is set for 145 degrees year round. Except when. Christmas weekend when it was six degrees out and we were working like animals around the clock dethawing people's pipes, right? And then I raised it up to 175 degrees. Okay. And then the house was nice and comfortable. Okay, so it just turned off again, mm -hmm. right? And our temperature, 140. Pressure's fine. Pressure's a little under 20. But that's set for 180 and it turns off. And if I crank this up, Uh, only when I go all the way up to 215 degrees did it actually do that. Now let's go back down. See, no change in that. I would start with the temperature probe. I think that we could test this, by the way, the temperature probe. That's what we're going to do now. All right, so there is the boiler temperature sensor. And if we look on the previous page, which is page 37, there's our resistance values. Our boiler temperature is around 120 degrees. Limit is flashing. No, just take the thing out of the pouch. No, just unzip it. Yeah. Okay, so we're 120 degrees, so our minimum should be 145.17 and 49.92. And we're gonna test, right, between Resistance value between thermosistor number and thermosistor common. Okay, so let's go back to that drawing, which is right there. Okay, we have two squares and two ovalish ones. The ovalish one is going to be one of these. So that's like that one opposite to that little notch right there. So it looks like that bottom. And the top. Let's test. So there we are, common and therm uh, thermosistor, and we're reading fifty three forty seven. So fifty three forty seven. If we go to our chart here, right, fifty three. It thinks it's one hundred and ten degrees between one hundred and ten and one hundred and twenty. Okay. So not only do we have a issue with the th uh, the temperature sensor, we also have an issue with the control module. See, double whammy. Andre, this is a perfect example of writing stuff down. I was gonna say ship down. 
All right, we're trying to keep it family oriented. Because I know Daniel's grandmother, Nanny, Nana, Nana Claire, watches this channel. And I'm trying to keep it more family oriented. Two days ago, I was with the other new hire, Nick. And we were working on a Whale McLean CGA6 gas fire boiler. Right? And it had a bad control board. And as soon as I took it off the truck and put it in the boiler and the job was, was complete, I ordered the part. The part got delivered. And this is how I'm going to justify my, my stupidity. Because I'm keeping it real, right? Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, so we have the bad control board and we have a temperature sensor that's not reading where it should, all right? And I normally have both in the truck, but I don't. I have the temperature sensor in the truck, but I don't have the control board in the truck. So now we're going to, to go get it. So anyway, I ordered the part, the control board, and since I take my, my little truck home, which I'm outfitting to be my new truck, because this truck is going to somebody else, right? I was like, oh, it came in, and I get the part delivered to my house, and I take it out of the box, and I put it on the shelf of my other truck, okay? And the reason for that, in my head, <laughs> stupidity, right? But now I need it, of course, right? Is that I maybe use Maybe I use that control board maybe like two or three times a heating season. So it's not a part that, that's frequently, not like a thermal cup right. or a circulator for them or like even a vent damper, yeah. right? It's once in a blue moon we use this control board. Really and sure enough, here it is a day later and I need the damn part. No! All right, so not too far away, but here we are at our second pipe doctor location where I park my truck, where my name is on a building. Let's go, I'll uh, give you guys a quick tour of the Sprinter, sorry, the Metris. Here it is. And look at that, it's me. If you guys want any stickers, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. It's kind of stocked up already, All right? But right, right here, there it is. There's that Whale McLean part. I'm actually going to take one of these anode rods too. I'm going to start changing anode rods and, and systems, but I'll give a truck door of this, by the way. I got some press fittings here uh, from a half to inch and a quarter. Uh, my condenser fan motors, blower motors, controls, everything's labeled already. Um, shelving, nipple trays, expansion tanks, brazing rig, all that good stuff. Uh, it's small. It's meant and designed for uh, residential service. You know, I got my coil, my sprays. The, um, the rams lubricant for the bender, the pipe bender. Even got a little thing right there for the paper towels and uh, some cleaning material. But uh, pretty good. Email me, mike at mikeypipes.com if you want some free stickers. Okay, we went to the truck, the other truck, and I got the control board. This is different. Comes with, look, it comes with manual. All right? With pictures in case. Some of you can't read. You can look at pictures, right? It comes with a packing slip. It comes with some stickers. Nice. Right? And it comes with a different control. Control See that? module. That looks kind of different than that. All right? This has a digital LED display here. Hmm. That one doesn't. Right. But everything else is the same. Right, we'll know exactly what the temperature of the boiler is and what it's set to there as well. This is the replacement of that one. It also has some harnesses, right, for low water cutoff. Because the newer Whale McLean, which is also this is the William, it's Williamson, but the Whale McLeans, the CGA models, that temperature and pressure probe is also a low water cutoff. Oh. Okay, yeah. so if you're installing a Whale McLean CGA series, series three, the temperature probe is also the low water cutoff. It does not operate on pressure like some tankless combis do. It actually senses water where it shouldn't be. Okay. Nice. Okay. Now, everything else is the same. So what I'm going to do is I am going to disconnect the wiring. From this control. Can I have the needle nose out of there? No, I got it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna need it anyway. Yeah, 
You get to top it if you want. So we disconnected. I loosened up a couple of, of the wires. Some of the wires took it out. And I took out the top screw. Mm -hmm. And I loosened up the bottom. So don't need to take the ones at the bottom out. But look, it's like a little pinch. Yeah. Right. One's right there. I took out the one on the top. Okay. Nice. And loosened the ones on the bottom. Okay. So now the one on the top goes back in. We'll tighten the ones on the bottom back. Nice and snug. Don't go crazy. It's plastic. All right. And now, if you notice, when I slid this out, I left everything on the bottom. Still there. Okay. Here. Power. That one to our sensor. This is our... This was circulator. See? They didn't even use it. They just widened it off. They didn't bother taking it out. Because <laughs> a circulator, right? There's three, there's three, circ three circulators here, and they're all controlled by that SR503 three-zone three switching relay. All right. All right? Okay. So let's not, we're not, we won't be dumb as we put things back in. Now, we have this white wire is our sensor. The orange is our spark. Goes there, high voltage. High voltage, pilot sense, pilot flame, okay? And we have this, which is our transformer. The black and white is line voltage, the yellow and blue is low voltage. So that goes in right there. The only thing we did not plug back in was that wire right there, because that goes to the circulator. If this was only a one zone boiler, you'd utilize that, which comes with the boiler and they just didn't bother to remove it. Okay, now, this wire is the same as this. All right, we'll go over that later. That's the wire going to the temperature and pressure probe. Okay, back here, we have this group of wires that goes there. We have our damper, vent damper connection yeah. that goes to the next one there. And then we have this connection, which is all of our controls. And that goes right into there. Well, that's the only thing labeled too. He's, he's labeled Everything's labeled, yep. Yeah. You know, as long as you can read. He's dead. Right? He's dead. As long as you can read and look at pictures. They give you pictures. That's what it is, pictures in the, in the service manual. Because they show you, they, they, they lines go to everything. But actual pictures of what it looks like. Read the manual. If you can't read, go to school. Okay. The only thing we did not connect is the um, temperature probe. Temperature sensor. Temperature. For now, we're going to plug that back in. Okay? Because to replace that, we have to drain the boiler down. Okay. I want to see how this boiler behaves with the existing temperature sensor in that. We're not touching any of the sensors right now. Right now, the boiler temperature is factory, it says minimum. Economy adjust, similar to this one. So, well, whatever. Let's turn power on. Put that switch on. So there is the control, okay? Right now it's sensing LCO, low water cutoff, because remember the stickers? This is not a low water cutoff. It wants to see that, right? And that's the reason why they give us this right in there, because this one actually is a low water cutoff. We're going to be upgrading that. But right now the boiler temperature is 88 degrees and it's... It's about right, right? But we know based on ohming this out that it did not work. So let's turn that switch back off. And what we have to do in order to take that out is that we have to drain the boiler. So we'll isolate all of our zones. These don't have any valves, unfortunately, on them. Of course not. What would that be? It would make our lives too easier. Where is the boiler feed valve? Boiler feed valve is right here. Okay. Now let's get that hose. And we're going to go right here with it. To the boiler drain. Is there a sink down here? No, but there's um, some pumps. Right, let me get that bucket. Okay. And everything else is off. Good. So let's open this up. And of course, nothing is coming out. Now it is. It got me a little bit. Why not? Well, the, um, we're not because everything is, there's no isolation valves on the supply side. 
It's only isolated these valves in the return, but there are check valves in there. But we'll see what happens. Okay. Now, let's get a wrench, and we're going to take this out. Here is the probe. There is the probe. Okay. Most people, right? You loosen that up first. Most people will put Teflon tape on this. You paying attention? Don't worry about that for right now. That is not what you put on here. You only use dope. Okay. okay. And the reason for that is, is that this needs to be, have a nice ground, needs metal to metal contact. Okay. It doesn't say in the manual here that came with this little thing right here, the instructions. There's no instructions that come with this. However, there are instructions that come with a guard dog, an RB24, a low water cutoff, right? There's also instructions that come with a steam boiler, um, low water cutoff, right? And it says on those instructions, do not use PTFE tape on the threads of the probe that's going inside the boiler. Okay. You shall use some kind of paste-based sealant, which is what we're going to use. I use Megalock. A lot of trucks have pipe dope. It's your, your choice. Whatever you like to use, you use that. Okay? So I'm going to loosen that up. We're going to put some dope on this and get that in there. Okay, good. Hold this. I can't do one-handedly. Leave me alone. Okay, we did take some water out of the boiler. We are going to get some water here anyway, though. You can hear it. Oh, shit. All right? Voila. So when you're doing this... Maybe you want to put a rag there. Yeah. Make sure, you know, make sure nothing electrical is there. Yeah. Because if water hit that, yeah, now we're out, you know, mm. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So now that that's in, I'm going to close this drain valve, right? And I'm going to open up the isolation valve that we closed. Let this thing start filling while I tighten, which is this one there. Okay? And we'll tighten this up. Okay, remember, no Teflon tape. Yeah. It's called PTFE tape. That means the Blue Monster, any kind of tape that you wrap around the threads yeah. is not to Somewhere be used. Okay, because okay, you will not get a sense from it if there's a low water condition. You may even get that error that the low water cutoff is a problem. So now, I'll leave me alone. The same number keeps calling. Like, what was wrong with you? The telemarketers too. Okay. Some probe in there. What Probe's in. Good. Now, I'm going to take this screw that I just took out, which was right there and still there. Good. Let's put this control back on. And the wire that's in that box does not come with the control. I, I, we buy that separately because a lot of times the probe is not changed. This is a low water cutoff probe. So realistically, this wire should work with that. It should. We're gonna find out. <laughs> if it doesn't, we have the other harness. Plug that back in there. Transformer power. This is line voltage power. This is that temperature gauge. Okay. Now all you need to do is put the flame sensor back in there like that. Okay. Look, we use it broken. It's the old sensor. Here's the old sensor. You notice there's no, no Teflon tape on there. That's factory installed. No Teflon tape on it, right? No, it doesn't look like it. And there's no Teflon tape on that one either. Oh. What you will see, though, in the field, you will see when you replace a low water cutoff, right, you will find Teflon tape on that. I will find Instagrammers and YouTubers and people on social media, plumbers, that actively wrapping Teflon tape on the probe right before they put it onto the boiler. And I'm the only one commenting. This is why some people don't like me, because I tell it like it is. Right? It's not like it is. Like, yo, bro, what are you doing? No Teflon tape. Read the manual. <laughs> Read the effing manual. There's a plethora of information. And part of your homework, because I'm going to give this to you. You, Andre, not you, them. <laughs> the 50,000, 120,000 subscribers. Right? By the way, there's a pool party. There's Yesterday is a post I posted on the community tab for the Mikey Pipes YouTube channel. We're taking a vote, Florida or New York, for the 100,000 subscriber pool party, all right? Every Ooh. vote counts, vote today. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna get this. Now. Cool. Ready, Andre? Yes, sir. Let's, Let's see, see what it. happens. Let's see it. Lights, camera, action. Sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> Boom, okay, what do we have down there? 
You still have that low water cutoff light flashing. Yeah. 86 LWCO. So now we're going to use this. And that should solve the problem. So let's turn that switch back off. Okay. That goes out of there. Like that. This plugs into there. This goes into there. And I'm going to add this ground. I'm going to add this ground wire to right next to this transformer. All right. Right next to the transformer. Like that. And hopefully this works. You ready? 140. You see L -L LWC hold it up? I sure don't. No. I hear a vent damper opening. I heard the damper opening. Okay. Now, you ready for your test now, your homework? Let's test them. You ready? Uh, let's get it. Andre, the rules are very simple. Here are the rules. For every question you get right, I give you a dollar. Every question you get wrong, you give me a dollar. Okay, don't you will not have to owe me money at the end of the game. Are you ready? Are you ready? I Temperature probe. Uh, module. Okay. Module you're, or, you're, you're, you're two right now. You're two now. Okay. Uh, that's like the, the temperature pressure and uh, PSI. Try to cater gauge. I'll give you that as well. Damn. So one, two, three, four, five. Five right so far. Oh man, you're on a roll. You're five and oh. Uh, Six and oh. Expansion tank. What kind of expansion tank? Extra. Number? Wow. Damn, seven. He's made seven dollars so far. Okay. Extra number 30. How, how do you, um, how do you say it's, that? Uh, You know, by the size. There's smaller ones in this. There are 15. The large one is 60, and they go higher than that. Uh, what is this called? Seven, eight. That's eight, right? What's this thing called? Uh, Five, four, three. Yeah, damn, eight. Um, switch and no. Oh, no, no. You, okay. Mixing valve. Okay, eight, nine. Relief valve. Roll! Oh, no! Okay, you're nine and one. Now you owe me. Now I owe you eight. Okay. What is? Hold on. What is that called? Relief valve. Okay. Okay. And it back to nine dollars. And what PSI is it open at? Uh, this is a hydronic blower, so thirty. Yes. What is this called? Um, that's like the relay. Yep. Switching relay. Eleven. Damn. Yeah, I made you buy you lunch today. What is this called? This piece? Um, fuel. <laughs> now I got him. I got him now. So we were at 11 right and one wrong. Two, what's it, two wrong or one wrong? That was one wrong. One wrong. So you were 11 and one. So it's $10. Five, yeah, five seconds. Five, four, three. Let me just say. Uh, just say it. It doesn't matter. You're, gonna, you, you, you're up ahead anyway. All right, no, you count it. Yeah. Draft hood. Draft hood. Actually says it. This draft hood. <laughs> By the way, this draft hood shall never, ever, ever be modified. What that means is do not cut this down. Do not modify. Do not, we could drill a hole in it to, to do a combustion analysis, but it shall never be cut down if it, cause, in order for it to fit to a flu. Okay. Never, ever, ever. So when you drill a hole in it, you do... That's for, that's for drilling a hole. That's for testing combustion, which we're going to do next. That's why the combustion analyzer is right over there. Okay, congratulations, you got nine out of 11, right? You earned yourself $9. Yeah, See, thank, you know, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I tested Nick, and again, he doesn't know anything about heating. You have a heating background, but he's learning. But congratulations, you did very, very well. Okay, so now we have 140, which is the lowest, by the way. Okay, we're gonna adjust the temperature. We're gonna make that 180, which is where it should be, okay? And that's the boiler temperature adjustment, right? It's set for, it's, it's reading 164, 163. That's actually going down because it's circulating, right? Uh, and this may not be right, but we're at 163. Now we have economy adjusting over here and it's dropping, okay? And this will continue to drop. 
Uh, the economy adjust is for gaining efficiency. Economy adjust. Yes. So this this will limit the the amount of time, bef- uh, the runtime of the circulator before a call for heat. For example, the boiler is at around 165 degrees. That's what it thinks it is right now. 164. It's moving around, right? Mm-hmm. By adjusting this, it will adjust the run. Uh, t- to my knowledge, adjust the runtime of the circulator before it fires up. So if I want to maximize efficiency of the circulator under the heating system, I turn all the way to max. Whale McLean representative told me to put it in the middle. Okay. That's where we keep it. Your mileage may vary, but this is where they told me to keep it at. Okay? So we're going to wait for this thing to go to temperature. It's set to 180. Right. right? It thinks it's... Wait for it. 161. Wait for the boiler fire up. But we also have everything closed. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's cooler there than it is there, but watch this, the cir- circulation occurs. Now, we may have to purge as well, because we, dra- we drain down some of the boiler, but we're going to have to have all the, cir- all the red lights are on? It's on relay? All three? One, two, three? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So now we wait. Isn't on. And I don't know why this is closed. This should be open, but yeah, that, this was closed before, right? I didn't touch this. Uh, yeah. Why do they have that closed? I don't know. Interesting. See, we're dropping like crazy. Look at our temperature, right? 150-ish there, and it's dropping. See that? Yeah. I said the valve was closed before. Why this valve is closed at this mixing valve, I don't know, but that's the way it was, and that's for another day. Okay. Board temperature is 122. All right. That's one, let's say it's like 130-ish, and it's almost, yeah, it's dropping. 120, 119, right? But we are circulating. Now, the next part of the job is wait, watching it go to temperature. And we're testing, uh, we're going to test combustion and making sure it's burning properly. All right, and then we'll maybe remind them about having a tune-up done every year. Maybe remind them that we have maintenance plans, that, which are $22.95 a month. We come once a year to do a tune-up. They get, emer- they get emergency service included, no trip charges, no diagnostic fees, things like that. All right, but, like I was saying in the truck, without, just by knowledge, and being an observant technician, being situational awareness, we, we saw, we heard what was going on while we're asking all the right questions. Okay? They said on those cold days, listen, they felt warmish, the baseboards in the house felt warmish, but it was still 48, 5 degrees in the house. That back room, right, was probably 120 degrees, but that radiant room was warm, right? Because radiant heat, in-floor radiant hydronic heating is designed for 120 degrees which is what it was at, <laughs> running at. So the rest of the house was suffering, right? Which also, I gave him this situation where I have literally 13 zones of heating in my house, half are radiant, half are hot water heating. I keep it 145 degrees. And when it's, when it's snowing out or cold out, I crank up the temperature. I crank up the temperature because I want the snow melt to work at 180 degrees. <laughs> but, all right, look, 125, 125. Well, 130-ish, yeah, right around there. And the boiler's running. So now we need to make sure we have circulation on all the zones. And I have to look at the earlier, some of the early pictures to see if this was closed. I'm pretty sure it was closed, but why it's closed, I don't know, because this is a mixing valve. Hot water comes into it, cold water mixes with it, and then you have the 120 degrees of leaving. So now, this may need to be opened, because before it didn't matter, the boil wasn't getting to 180 degrees, now it's going to, right? And now you'll have a super hot floor. And if it's a wood floor, not a tile floor, the floor will be destroyed. That 180 degrees of heat will, if it's a wood, is a wood floor in the den? Yeah, so. Oh, the thing is the, um, tile floor looks like wood? Tile, okay, good. Because if that, it, we'll leave that closed for now. But if that was a wood floor and I put 180 degrees of water th- under that floor, the, the, all the floor will dry out and warp and it'll be like, you'll kill that floor. Okay. So if that happens, you just close up like this. No, I'm just, I'm just speaking just, just general knowledge because this is a mixing valve, a thermostatic mixing valve, which just needs to send lower temperature water than the boiler normally creates to, to that floor. All right, yeah. I know, but I'm, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, hypothetically speaking, like, if it was to, they did have a wooden floor. And you, you, have, you, want to make sure, if you want to make sure that that mixing valve is doing its right thing, that the floor doesn't get too hot. All right. And they would tell you, but because they couldn't walk on the floor. That would be the first symptom. The floor is burning hot. You see that? Yeah. It happens. Yep. This guy taking notes, taking pictures, taking video all day long. Milwaukee drill, step bit, six inches. Little hole. See that? That's a little hole. Now, everyone in the future, maybe you one day, is going to know 
that someone drilled a hole in them. <laughs> right? Everyone in the future is going to know that someone in the past drilled a hole for a purpose. I didn't drill a hole just to make a hole. Right? My name is Mikey Pipes. My name is not Mr. <laughs> Holes. You know, holy holes. I'm not like a donut king where I have holes in my donuts. No. I'm drilling a hole to do a combustion analysis. Okay. So here is our Testo 320. Unfortunately, this model combustion analyzer has been discontinued by Testo, the manufacturer. They now make a one that Daniel has, a 310. I believe it's called a 310. And a 300. 300 is an Android-based um, combustion analyzer. It's nice. I think it's a touch screen. It's very nice. I have one in the shop. I've used it a couple times, but I just don't like it. So I don't use it. Okay? We're going to go to flue gas analysis by hitting OK. It's on thing on natural gas. If we were working on other fuels, we could do that too. But we're going to hit OK again. Okay. Right? And now it's in a state of readiness. Right? Right now, uh, we're getting we're reading an ambient temperature or temperature of stack, which is the probe, of 64.2 degrees. We're at 21% oxygen, which is what you're breathing in right now. 21% is O2. It's actually 21 and a little bit of change, but 21 is O2. Correct? We're also reading a zero parts per million or particles per million of carbon monoxide. And I have some other numbers that are dashed out, right? Some other things, but actually ambient is right there at the bottom, 71.5, sorry. Let's go back to the screen right here. This is the numbers we're gonna look at. We're gonna hit okay. Okay, oh, what happened? Blue gas analysis, natural gas. I'm gonna hit the start button. Okay, you're gonna hold that and I'm taking the probe, the first thing you're gonna make sure, if it's, especially if it's ice cold outside, make sure there's no ice or anything in there. Make sure there's no liquids, frozen, anything like damaged. Make sure everything's intact, like this is in place, right? Mm -hmm. And this probe, see right there? It's gonna go halfway into the flue. Not all the way in, not all the way out, but halfway, halfway right there, okay? And we're gonna take a look at these numbers. We're gonna see them climb up, obviously, this temperature of the stack. We're going to see O2 drop. We're going to see a part per million or parts per million of carbon monoxide. We're also going to see a gross efficiency, EFF gross, GR. That's the efficiency of the boiler. For every dollar of gas it's using, 85.1 cents in climbing is actually dedicated to heat the, the house. The boiler turned off. We're at 180 degrees. That's good. Right? Uh, we're going to hit stop right there for right now. But we want to uh, check a few things because we did drain the boiler. This is hot. That is, yeah, it's hot, and so is that, it is warmish. Okay, this is a radiant floor. They're all hot. Okay, we got the job done. They're up and running. And Andre looks a little happy too, look. He's a sense of accomplishment. Very excited, very excited. Very excited. Mikey piping, making- Mikey piping. Mikey pipes, making and the trays fun again. Make the trades great again, too. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard, maybe you're not a, a dedicated and loyal watcher and part of the community of the Mikey Pipes Pipe Doctor YouTube channel, check out Mikey Pipes Philanthropy YouTube channel, where we just started doing giving back to the community. We're giving back to the community by providing plumbing and heating services, which is a basic human right to those who can't afford it. And I set up a YouTube channel exclusively for those missions that we accomplish for people. And 100% of all revenue, all sponsorships, is going to be sent to those who can't afford to have this work done, right? And yes, there's a lot of technicalities involved, but we are a, we're gonna be a 503C3 charity. So even if you're a manufacturer, if you're a homeowner, just a general member of the community watching this channel, uh, watching me and the work that my, my team does, you can donate and also get a tax deductible donation. All right, check it out. Mikey Pipes Philanthropy. Details in the description box down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Andre has not put his seatbelt on yet. That's why the truck is beeping like that. Just as, as annoying as those damn carbon monoxide and smoke detectors that are chirping in a customer's homes where I charge heavily for AA and 9 volt batteries. I do. I really do. A 9 volt battery is $20. And I will sell you a 9-volt battery if you need one. Well, speaking of pricing and $20 9-volt batteries, just for a second, let's get, I'm going to entertain some of you. And we're going to talk about pricing of parts. Okay? Pricing of parts. 
on this service call, we replaced the boiler control board and the temperature sensor. Neither of which right now are available anywhere in, in local distribution or even online. You go to supplyhouse.com, not available. You call Ferguson, not available. I called AF Supply, not available. Every place is back ordered from Whale McLean, right? But I have the parts on my truck. They're priceless. Now, I'm not saying we're gonna price gouge anyone, but if you're selling a part that's on your truck, let's say this part costs you a hundred bucks. If you're selling that part for anything, you know, anything remotely close to hundred dollars, you're losing money and you're leaving money on the table, all right? We are not a brick and mortar shop. We are a moving warehouse on wheels, okay? There are four wheels on this truck I'm driving right now, right? And it costs a lot of money to be driving around with, I don't know, probably $100,000 worth of material in the back of this truck and tools, right? It costs money, okay? I'm not like Amazon where you buy the thermal couple for $6.95 and they have you the next day. No, there's a reason why it's $115 on the truck. Because it's called markup and it's, it's, cost, it's called the cost of doing business. So for example, now I can't replace the part that I took off the truck. What do I do? Well, I have to have resources where I can get basically anything I want the next, the next day because it's on the face of the earth, I can get it. And I've proven that to my dedicated and loyal community. 119,700 of you make moves. Together, let's make the trades great again. And there's no reason why each and every single one of us should not make as much, if not more, than lawyers, doctors, accountants. There's no reason why. Facts. Just saying. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Andre. You won $9 today in the parts identification challenge. $9. You had 11 questions, you all got two wrong. One he timed out on, and one I think he, sp he spoke first without thinking. So he got it wrong. He would've got 11 out of 11, but rules are the rule. Everyone he got right, he gets a dollar. Everyone he gets wrong, he gives me a dollar. I owe him $9, I'll buy him lunch. I think we'll be even. He likes Wendy's. I like White Castle. But, but, in the near future, he's gonna try King Umberto's, and he's gonna be in love <laughs> with KU. Thank you.